I need your help. I need your help to demonstrate something that I think is really important. I need your help to show that this is something that we all feel, but that sometimes we forget about. Can everybody please stand up again? Come on, everybody stand up. Okay, I want to ask you all right now, hold hands with the person that is standing next to you. Please go ahead, everybody hold hands. Okay, shh, quiet please. Now keep holding hands, close your eyes, and for the next five seconds, think about what you're feeling. Here we go, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, let go now. That's okay. Fine. <laughs> Give yourself an applause to that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for participating in this small experiment, right? Because we can call it an experiment. Now, I've done this a couple of times before with another group of people. So let me tell you how they described it, and maybe you can see how you experienced it, how you felt it. Maybe you felt something a little bit warm, maybe even a little bit sweaty, <laughs> or something very cold. Maybe you felt something rough or smooth, but I think we can agree it feels kind of awkward to hold hands like this, right? <laughs> it's all right for you, okay, perfect. <laughs> now, for most people, why does this feel awkward? It doesn't feel awkward because of what you feel exactly. It's not awkward because you feel something warm or smooth. It's awkward because I ask you to hold hands with another person in a theater. Now, touch, touch is something very social. But sometimes we forget how important social touch really is. Think about some of the most important moments of your life. A hug from your mother after a rough day at school. Your first kiss. Holding your newborn son or daughter for the first time. Now, we may not always realize, but all of these important moments of our life involve social touch. Social touch is, in fact, so important for us that we can hardly live without it. And I want to share with you a story that is famous among researchers working on social touch. In the mid-1960s in Romania, a lot of measures were taken by the government to increase birth rates in the country. And because of this increase in birth rates, a lot of very young children ended up in institutions and orphanages. And these orphanages were so understaffed that a lot of these children grew up without the normal social contact that you would have within a family. And most importantly, these children didn't receive loving, caring touch from their parents. Now, because of this lack of touch, these children suffered in their emotional development, their cognitive development, their physical development even, and some of them passed away. Now, when in the 1990s, researchers went to Romania, and they went into these orphanages, and they met these touch-deprived children, they found that massage therapy especially could help these children get healthy again. Now, I think this story shows just how important touch is to us. We can hardly live without it. We need to be touched. And the more loving, caring touch a child receives from his parents, the better it is for their development. Now, of course, touch is not just important for children. As a matter of fact, just a moment ago, right before I walked onto this stage, my girlfriend hugged me to wish me good luck. Now, different from what he's thinking, or she, <laughs> this, is, this is a very simple, supportive gesture to make, right? It's something very simple. But to me, it makes a world of difference. What actually happens in our bodies when we're being touched by another person in a situation like that is that our heart rate is lowered. The amount of stress hormones that our body produces is reduced, and our body starts producing hormones that help in the forming of social bonds. Now, all of these things happen in our body simply because we're being touched by another person. And this is actually exactly the reason why touch is also so important in healthcare. Now, maybe you've gone through this yourself, or maybe you know someone who's gone through it, but 
being hospitalized puts you in a very vulnerable position. You don't know exactly what's going to happen. You're not in control of the situation. You feel uncomfortable and anxious. And then the doctor comes in. He tries to put your mind at ease. He explains your situation to you. And while he does this, he puts his hand on your shoulder. Now, again, this is a very simple gesture to make, but it makes a world of difference. We know from research that when a patient is touched by a nurse or a doctor, even simply on the shoulder, their heart rate is lowered, their stress response is reduced, and they feel better overall. Now, of course, this is not all that we use touch for. We use touch to greet each other, to show love, care, and affection, to get someone's attention, to punish even. Touch plays a vital part in the way that we communicate with each other. Now, this TED Talk, this will be available later on the internet. People from all over the world will be able to see me standing here, and they can hear me talk about social touch. But the experiment that we did at the beginning, the hand-holding, that is something only you here in the audience experienced. And with the communication technology that we use every day, like our, our smartphones, it's much the same story. We can talk to each other on the phone, we can see each other through video chat applications, but the one thing that we cannot do is touch. Or can we? Now, I'm fascinated by technology. I'm especially fascinated by how people use technology and how we can design technology to better fit with how people act socially. At the Human Media Interaction Group of the University of Twente here in Enschede, I've been investigating ways in which we can use technology for social touch. And today I want to share with you some of the things that I have learned. Now, how do you touch someone through technology? What should such a touch feel like? Where on the body should you feel this touch? These were some of the first questions that I struggled with. So I teamed up with a researcher and fashion technologist from Amsterdam. And together we created something that we call the TUST, or Tactile Sleeve for Social Touch. Now, the TUST is a wearable device, so a device that you wear on your body, much like a smartwatch or a heart rate monitor. And it allows you to transmit all kinds of touches over the internet to another person also wearing a TUST. Now, imagine you're a parent. You're away from home on a business trip. And you know that your child is about to go to bed. You gently stroke your sleeve, and your child can feel this stroking motion on their arm right before they fall asleep. Think of your grandmother who's moved away to an elderly home. You gently put your hand on your arm and your grandmother can feel your hand on her arm and she knows that you're connected. Do you think that maybe these kind of touch interactions in our busy internet-connected world could bring us closer together? Now, to make these kind of touches possible, we developed a sensor that is made of textile and that can detect very subtle touches, but also very rough ones, like squeezing. And to make you feel these touches, we use very simple vibration motors, the same ones that you find in your mobile phone, for example. So a touch that I make to my sleeve, you would feel as a vibration pattern. Now, maybe you think, a vibration, that's not really like human touch. And I think you would be right. A vibration pattern is a very rough substitute for a human touch. But Maybe that's not really the point. What we're investigating is which elements of a human touch we need to be able to reproduce in order to still give people the feeling that they're being touched by another person. Now, how do we do this? Well, one way is to, on the one hand, look at how people respond to being touched by another person, and on the other hand, look how they respond to being touched by technology, like our tossed sleeve, and then compare the two. Let me give you an example. We know that a stroking touch feels pleasant. But exactly how pleasant it feels depends on the speed of stroking. Now you can try this again with your neighbor if you want. You've, <laughs> you've acquainted, you know each other a little bit better now. Something that is either too slow or too fast is less pleasant than something in between. Now with our sleeve, with the tost, we can use these vibration motors to create a sort of digital stroking sensation. So what you feel is a single vibration point move over your arm. And it kind of feels like your arm is being stroked. And we can also change the speed of this stroking. So what we did, 
we let people feel these digital stroking sensations at different speeds, and we ask them, how pleasant does it feel to you? Now here you see a comparison between how people respond to real touch, real stroking touch at different speeds, and how they respond to our digital touch, the touch from this sleeve. You can actually see that the pattern of responses is quite similar. So this is one indication that maybe we don't need to exactly reproduce how a human touch feels to still give people the feeling that they're being touched by another person. Now, maybe you're thinking this all sounds quite nice, this works in the lab and it probably stays in the lab. Well, let's for a moment imagine that you wouldn't put the dust on your arm but on a different body part. Let's for a moment think about the most intimate form of touch that we know. Sex. You can already buy devices today that allow you to have sex over the internet with another person. So if we can already have technology that you can just buy on the internet that allows you to have sex with someone at the other end of the world, it's not too crazy to think that this kind of social touch technology, this sleeve of ours, is going to be widely available in the future. And actually, there are other examples. There's incredibly sophisticated technology that allows a top surgeon in the United States to operate on a patient in Australia. And the surgeon can really feel the incisions that he's making. There's technology that allows someone in Noordwijk, here in the Netherlands, to shake hands with an astronaut in the space station. The technology is already there. We just need to figure out how best to use it. And I think that social touch technology can really change the way that we communicate with each other, the way that we share our experiences and the way that we share our intimate feelings with the people that we care about, but that are not always close by. Now think about healthcare. We know that social touch is vitally important for our emotional well-being, even our physical well-being. Yet the time that we will spend at the doctor's office is most likely to decrease. There are all kinds of technological developments in healthcare. We have healthcare applications on our smartphone and smartwatches that can pretty much track our health in real time. And in the future, when we make an appointment with a healthcare professional, we will no longer go to a doctor's office. We will have this appointment over the internet. And when we are hospitalized, there will no longer be a nurse by our bedside, but a human-like robot. And with this technology, we run the risk of losing this human touch. But I think that we also have an opportunity. We have an opportunity to reintroduce the sense of physicality, the sense of intimacy, the sense of social touch, but through technology. I think we have this opportunity now, and I think we should grab it with both hands. Thank you very much.